Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with baked lemon pepper salmon. That's right, this recipe has it all. It's easy, healthy, and it looks like you dropped it in the dirt. So I wasn't completely thrilled with the appearance, and while we're at it, I wasn't even that thrilled with the taste. But I still want you to check out this video because I'm going to show you the technique behind baking salmon properly. So I started out by grinding a whole bunch of black pepper into some lemon juice. And of course, while I was doing this, I realized that watching black pepper be ground into lemon juice is not that exciting. So I thought maybe I'll change camera angles a few times, but that didn't work. It was still very boring. In fact, the only thing I can think of that's more tedious would be listening to someone describe how boring grinding black pepper into lemon juice is. That would be brutal. But anyway, I also decided to add a spoon of golden miso. That is a fermented soybean paste. I threw in a spoon of Dijon, a slightly bigger spoon of mayonnaise, and of course a little dusting of cayenne, and we're just gonna whisk that up. And I really should have used the freakishly small metal whisk for this. So please pardon the bad whisk to glass mixing bowl size ratio, but it worked. So I mixed that up. And while I'm mixing this up, let me explain something. This is kind of two videos. One is for the recipe I'm doing here with this lemon black pepper glaze which was not as successful as I wanted it to be. I'll explain more about that later. And then the other part of this is just for you to simply watch how to bake salmon. So on that level, the video succeeded, but I don't want you to necessarily feel you have to make this exact mixture. So once my lemon pepper mixture was done, I proceeded to spread it over two fairly large wild salmon fillets. Those were frozen and thawed. And of course, I've said this before, frozen wild salmon better than fresh farm salmon any day of the week. And I'm not using all of it. I'm going to save some for later because I want to put some more on before we bake it. So what I wanted to do here was spread this very acidic, very peppery marinade over the salmon. Okay, what I was going for was a partial pre-baked pickling of the protein. And really, if I'm being honest, the alliteration was better than the idea. But you got to try things. So I spread it all over. I wrapped it up. I put it in the fridge for 30 minutes, after which I pulled it out, transferred it onto a lined baking sheet to prepare it for the oven. And then we're going to take that little bit of the lemon pepper mixture we saved and go ahead and spread that on top. I don't want to sit in a big pool of that stuff, but I tried to get as much on there as I could without it running off. After that, I decided to grind a little more black pepper on, which of course gave it its ultimate, hey, who dropped the salmon in the campfire look? And then last but not least, a generous sprinkling of sea salt or any salt. The major difference between proteins you eat in a restaurant and proteins you eat at home is the amount of salt that's applied before it's cooked. True story. And after that salmon was properly seasoned, we're going to pop it into a very well preheated 450 degree oven. It has to be a very hot oven. And it's going to cook approximately 10 to 15 minutes or until perfect. And how do you know? You have to check with a fork. There's nothing wrong with this, especially on salmon. You're going to have a natural seam right in the center. Just stick your fork in there and look inside to see if it's to that perfect point where the salmon is cooked to just barely medium. And you're going to see that in a second when we do the final shot of digging in. So do not be afraid to check. No one's going to notice that when you put it on the plate. I guess that's one of the advantages of having such a distracting appearance. All right, those little fork marks are going to be the least of people's worries when you put this in front of them. So you can see here, this is what mine looked like after about 12 minutes, just absolutely perfectly cooked, will flake apart, yet that meat still has a little bit of opaqueness to it, but it is cooked and hot all the way through. So that's personal preference. That's how I think you should enjoy salmon. If you want to cook it for another three or four minutes until it's cooked all the way through, go ahead. It just won't be as moist, but suit yourself. You are the commish of your fish. And as far as flavor went, this needed some sweetness. The next time I try this, I'm going to add something like, I don't know, maybe a little honey, maybe a spoon of barbecue sauce, maybe a little hoisin. I don't know, something sweet. Figuring that out is a joy that people that don't cook will never feel. It's kind of sad. So while I'm not sure if you should try this exact recipe as shown, I really think baking salmon is a great technique. And quick tip, if you're stuck for ideas, any prepared salad dressing usually works perfect for this procedure. So I really do hope you give it a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.